What's up? Today I'm sick, but I'm gonna be out cutting anyways. Uh, I don't think it's the Rona. Just sinus headache. Probably from the work that I do. And, uh, you know, I mean, when you get fever and stuff like that and you're self-employed, there are no days off sometimes. If you gotta catch up, see the weather coming. It's cloudy, we're supposed to get a lot of rain. Had a lot of rain last week, we gotta get caught up. This person called me before I head out of town uh, like a week ago when I went and saw Top Notch, uh, which I went and cut some crazy lawns with him. But uh, today we're just cutting, eh, it's a mild one. I mean, it's a little ugly. Definitely not something I'd take on as a weekly, typically. You know, like if it's like this every week, I don't want to mess with it. But if you're going to pick up this lawn and you're going to cut it and you come weekly, It'll be fine. It, it won't grow too fast. The only thing I see in here that I'm not a big fan is Poana. It strings up underneath the blades. Kind of twists up. It doesn't really cut very well. The uh, beds definitely need some love. I'm just going to run the weed eater over it. They'll need to uh, come back in and put some mulch in. We're going to go ahead and drop some edging and get this cleaned up. You can see right here, it's real dark. This is a spot where water pulls up. I mean, it's it's not too crazy, but it's early spring and it's getting there. Let's go take a look at the back. All right. Let's take a look at the back. It might not show up on camera, but that stuff's like two and a half feet high. It's every bit of knee high in there. But, you know, I mean, it's just that one area, right? It's just that one area. <laughs> and then over here knee high clumps of fescue and just weeds let's get Oklahoma mix so there's something I need to watch out for oh that's pretty soft but I'll need to watch out for that for sure and then back here as well I don't know if I'll be able to fit in there's a uh, gate over there but this is an easement which is for the city and I guess uh, there's gas lines that run through back there and that needs to be mowed and serviced as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to it. I hope you enjoy the video. Look at all this stuff from yesterday. <laughs> this is a little tornado siren. <laughs> <coughs> Who cares? Let's get to this. hear the sirens anymore I think we're all right <laughs> hey Rachel we got another stupid comment I can't stand this guy genuine acts of kindness don't require a camera and anything else it's just posing for a profit or personal gain yeah buddy the video I made with your mother last night was pure charity and she did not complain one bit oh my goodness is he actually allowed to say that what, what you need to do uh, is is to be overly nice so, you know, no matter how mean the other kids are to you just don't retaliate you, you be passive okay hey welcome back to the channel a uh, just a uh, little quick disclaimer if you feel like you've seen this video before that means you're a supporter of the boring channel as well that's my other channel and people ask what the difference is oftentimes between this channel and that channel and if you are new basically I started the boring channel as a joke that's why I called it the boring channel because I thought the type of content would be boring and people wouldn't enjoy it but jokes on me it took off basically the difference is on this channel I leave commentary oftentimes I talk about business tips for people that are starting up or in business for a few years talk about philosophy of life things like that as well as just things I might be going through or try to share some inspirational, motivational thing in my video. Oftentimes, uh, what I'm looking for is some kind of positive impact, something that uh, drives me forward and keeps me motivated. So one of the things I wanna talk about today is actually goals. And the reason why I wanna talk about that is because obviously we're at the beginning of the year, it's still winter, and you know, right now if you're in business or if you're just you know for your own personal life you should have goals as well a lot of people think of a goal and then they never write down that goal and they never track that goal and they never build a plan to achieve that goal so one of the things that I really want to convey is that you should be 
planning your goals. I don't care if they're obtainable or if they're huge. It's really up to you and how you work best. So it might work best for you to have a goal that's smaller and obtainable and bite size. And then when you hit that goal, you have another goal that you go to. And then when you hit that goal, you have another goal you get to. If I were to explain it a little easier and we'll just, you know, I like to kind of dumb things down because that's the way that I feel things are explained well to me and that I, I get analogies and, and that's how I retain information really well. So if it's used in an example, so let's just say if you're baking a cake, right? And you want to cook that cake, you're going to need to know things like what, what is the process that's involved? Uh, what are the ingredients you're going to use? What equipment or assistance will you need? Um, how long will it take for each step? What does the end result look like? What is the benefit that's involved? What are any problems that might come up or that you can expect and how would you address them? All those things are going to matter. So when you're building that plan, you should account for those things. So, okay, say you have a goal and you want to make X amount of income per year because you know you want to do whatever it might be. Maybe you want to take a vacation or, you know, if you're in the lawn business, you're like, hey, I want to buy a mower. What's it going to take? What are the steps that are involved? What do you need to do to get there? What are the problems that are going to come up? All those things are going to be stuff that uh, really matters when you're building and trying to achieve that thing to knock out. So it could be anything for you. And if you're, uh, you know, you got a personal life, like my wife and I want to buy a house and this and that, and we, we have uh, key performance indi indicators on the things that we need to do, do before we do that. And what we would like to see before that happens and what comes up. Now, there's always going to be like the black swan events, like the last couple of years, we've had crazy things going on in the world that may throw a wrench in that. But you can't lose sight of what your goal is and you can't get distracted. It is easy to get distracted. So like for me, for example, one of the things that distracts me is when I come across a negative comment on my channel, uh, I'll tend to get distracted because you get invested in that stuff. I don't, I don't know if there's any creators that have channels my size that are trying to keep up with comments on multiple platforms. So, you know, we've got both channels and they both have a Facebook page and um, Juggernaut has a TikTok channel and soon it'll have a TikTok for the boring channel and trying to keep up with the comments on there. There's all these positive comments that come in and then every now and then you get that one negative one and it's easy to say, yeah, ignore that. But the reality is then you're, you know, you're, you're actually looking at it. So anyways, if you do look through the comments, you'll notice that a lot of times I give everything a heart and a thumbs up positive, negative, it doesn't matter. That's something that I do. I have, If I read that comment, that is something that I do to let you know I read that. Now, I can't respond back to everyone, and I try to, but I, I really go in depth with the comments, and I when I comment back, I try to um, put my time in it and give you a little piece of my time and, and my thought and my energy because I know that it took you time to support the channel and I'm super appreciative and grateful for everyone that does and you know now we have over a million followers on all platforms collectively which is just truly amazing so let's move from the goals and that nonsense because you may not even really care about that stuff but let's talk about like your support group in your life the people that you are close to that are surrounding you you need to have a tight-knit su support group people that you can talk to and communicate with that help lift you and help bring you to that next level. So if you're in business, having a network of people that are in your area that are going through the same struggles as you, battling the same issues as you, that brings accountability and it helps everybody rise at the same time. And you'll find that it's really beneficial. For me and my business, I always catered towards a certain client and then I had a, another friend that catered towards a different type of client and a different type of property. So when I came across that type of client, somebody called me and asked me to work on this large commercial property, I just sent it his way and then he sent me work all the time and it worked uh, very beneficial, it was mutually beneficial. And then if I ever had a breakdown with a piece of equipment, I could just call him up and say, hey man, I've got a mower, it's in the shop for like two weeks, you care if I use your mower? He'd be like, yeah, go for it. So, you know, that's pretty cool. And I've done the same thing for him as well.
all right so if you're wondering what's going on there i shot everything over this way because i can tell they're trying to to do good stuff to their lawn right now they got it real low they're trying to you know have a real nice bermuda lawn so we're gonna go ahead and just shoot it all over here that creates a little more work for me but it is what it is and then from there i just blow that back onto that lawn and then i'm gonna fan that grass out into the turf so i'm gonna use a blower go back and forth back and forth with it and that's gonna push the grass clippings down into the turf where they're not gonna be seen they're not gonna be ugly they're not gonna be clumped up either because we're gonna disperse them while we're doing that and we do have some turnaround marks it's almost impossible not to right now it's been raining all last week raining this uh this week when i first started today the tornado sirens went off but i have multiple friends in the industry and i'm always reaching out and trying to find new people that are in the area that want to talk communicate talk about business i'm always looking for somebody to coach and mentor that is um, taking it serious and the reason being, and this is something you should do as well, so you reach up to the guys that are ahead of you, and you let them mentor you. And that's when you're quiet, and you listen, and you ask valid questions that mean something. You don't ask, should I buy a Chevy, or should I buy a Ford, should I buy this weed eater, or that weed eater? That's not the stuff that's going to move you forward. But instead, you're going to ask the questions that matter, the questions that really solve a problem. But this goes further than just business, so you need to communicate and talk with somebody that has already gone through the journey that you're wanting to go through. And then once you get to a spot where you've accomplished something, then you can in turn help somebody else that was where you were at. Like this on my channel, I try to communicate and help and mentor people through my videos. And when somebody reaches out to me, and I have the time for it, I like to actually talk with him. So earlier this week I was talking with a guy here that's local that fired up late last year and he's doing really well but he had some questions and so I'm going through the process on helping him out and answering questions and giving him some beneficial information and I think it's it's very important to do that because it hones your skills and makes you better at what you're doing. It um, really really fine fine tunes your performance. If you can't explain it clearly to somebody else then you don't really have a good system around it and you're you're not going to get the results that you need. But also when you are building that support group, keep in mind that the friends you hang out with, oftentimes those people are a reflection and can bring out good qualities or negative qualities in you. And not everyone wants to see the positive side of you shine. Maybe they just want to see you bring out your demons and, and burn down everything around you because that is what drives them. That's their motivator. You're looking for people that have the motivators to see people rise and see people lift up and go to the next level and have success and, and enjoy life. If you're watching, that's what I'm looking for for you. That's, that's my motivator is I like to see impact. I want to see positive impact from uh, my channel and everything that I do so I really do my best to stay out of a, a negative mindset now you have to create a personal schedule for yourself and then you have to follow it so that's the same as the goals so you created a goal and once you have that goal there's gonna be things that you have to do consistently to achieve it you can't just write it down and call it good you gotta write it down have it somewhere that you can see it think about it daily or weekly or whatever you have to check back in on it and then you have to be able to actually follow a schedule, make it happen. Being devoted and dedicated to what you want to see happen in your life and going after it day by day is so important. There's going to be battles that come up constantly. There's going to be things that are in your face and things that are difficult and there's going to be challenges and there's going to be problems and you're going to have to overcome them. And that's okay. Those are a good thing. If you're seeing new problems, then you're breaking out of your comfort zone, finding that new next step, that thing that's going to take you to the next level. But if your reoccurring problems show up and you're having that same problem day after day, year after year, that's your sign. You need to fix that. If it gets to year after year, you're going too far out. You need to fix that. And you need to cut the emotional decision from that and just make it a decision that's based off of logic. So if you're in business, 
a good example for me is I went into every winter for the first three or four years with clients owing me money. And when I see, say clients owed me money, I mean collectively thousands of dollars were owed to me that I did not get paid until we chased that money down. And then at the end of it, we'd have to write off, you know, a thousand, five hundred, whatever, however much money it was that we could not actually acquire from work that we had previously done, energy that I put out, time that I'd spent away from the family, expenses that I put into somebody's property. So I solved that by creating a system in my business where if I did work, you had a card on file with my company and I build that card upon completion of service at the end of that work day. That's the way I worked. And so say I was doing a project like this, which this one was a free project that I did for someone in our community to help them out, which is something that I do a lot on the channel and I really enjoy doing it. And it's, it's something that gives me fulfillment. So that's a goal of mine is to be able to have fulfillment in the work that I do, have enjoyment in the work that I do, to love what I do, to make me want to do what I do. But what doesn't make you feel fulfilled is that when you're trying to take care of your family, when you're trying to pay your bills, and you work and do all of this stuff, to then have a situation where you don't get paid for a ton of hours, hundreds of hours that you worked that year, you didn't get paid for it. You might as well just stayed home because you're not getting paid for it. Well, create a system to take care of that because it is your responsibility. It is your fault that that didn't happen. It is not the client's fault that they didn't pay the bill. You have to accept the responsibility that everything that happens to you happens to you because of something you did. And that's the way it works. It is a hard pill to swallow, but it is something that has to be done in business and you have to understand it. And you have to realize that every time you are doing something like that, Every time that you are solving that problem, you are able to move to the next bigger problem as you scale your business or grow to the next level or achieve the next goal. Hey, if you could go ahead and just give us a thumbs up and a subscribe. By the way, there is some common confusion on the subscription button here on YouTube. It doesn't cost you any money. That's just telling YouTube that you enjoy the content and it helps it push it out to other people. That is probably one of the best things you can do for the channel. Just subscribe, leave a comment, leave a thumbs up. It's just that the interaction really helps. I don't offer any way for my viewers to give me financial backing because I go out and I do this stuff and you guys love it and you support it and I enjoy doing it. The Lord's blessed me and has in return covered my financial situation so that I'm not having that burden of worrying about how I'm going to do this anymore. It's just something that I can do. And because I am getting taken care of in those areas, oftentimes instead of supporting me financially, I'd actually request that you support one of the GoFundMes. If you want to send money, send send money to a GoFundMe to somebody that's in a hardship. And I've I pre-vetted some of these people that I've actually met and I know they were going through something and I know they were in a hardship. And um, so I, I oftentimes in my links of my channel will put a link to somebody that's had that issue. Now, if you are seeing that link and it's anywhere other than Long Care Juggernaut or the Boring Channel on any platform, it's not me. So don't get scammed. The best way to get to that link is from YouTube, from the description of my original videos. So. I have to throw that out there because there's a lot of people using my content to scam people, which I just um, is a huge negative side effect of what I do. Because obviously, like I said, I'm looking for positive impact and to see people have success and growth and good things happening in their life. And the last thing I want them to do is throw money to somebody that's just using the content for a negative purpose.
all right it's an absolute mess but we've got the first pass and over here i took a little bit of the second pass i was cutting it weird because i didn't want to sling anything towards the door and the same thing over by the shed you don't want to throw stuff well if you're throwing grass clippings you got to be real careful if you're throwing it towards the fence if you're throwing it towards chain link or anything lighter colored because it'll stain it chain link it'll get caught up in there and then on a fence it'll it'll stick to it and it'll come off but you just got to be careful i'll use a blower and blow that off of there you can see right here we've got grass that's matted down and it's starting to sprinkle on me so all this stuff is wet from being tall plus it's starting to sprinkle but if i don't hurry up it's gonna rain so i'm gonna come through and weed eat and then i'm gonna blow everything off and when i have all these extra clippings i'm gonna kick that stuff into the yard and then once i disperse it i'm gonna mow it all one more time that should polish it up and make it look about as good as it can now when i do that i'm gonna come in here and blow all this stuff with the blower and kick it all down too not too much i can do in the flower beds but you know whatever all right let's get the weed eater i'm not gonna lie i feel like a load of crap today it's not good at all like i said a lot of head pressure i know you guys are gonna appreciate me taking the extra time to film it right so if you would now would be a great time to give us give us a thumbs up support the channel if you're not subscribed go ahead and subscribe we got a lot of these videos and they're all good so let's get back to it All right, so this is the speed feed head. I've been using this for several years. The really cool thing about it is that if you do want to restring your weed eater, you can just run a string all the way through it, find the middle point, and then it's got a ratcheting mechanism to actually pull the string into the head so that you don't have to take it apart like what I'm doing now, but occasionally you get string weld where the string melts together when it's real hot, or you have a situation like this where the string breaks off on one side, you have to pull it apart, and then you know rewind it manually or you could just close everything back up and run it back through but because the strings already used it's more difficult to actually run it back through that way so I'm making sure I get the string back in there everything's uh, lining up right and then when you put the cap back on you'll notice I'll tap on it and that's to make sure that caps all the way on there because if it's partially off what's gonna happen is that the centrifugal force from when you actually start the machine and you have the trimmer head running it's going to blow that cap off and then your string's going to go everywhere and it's it's going to be a mess. But for the most part, I really enjoy that head. That's a common question that's asked. And then when I'm cutting yards, I get a lot of questions about what kind of string I use. 
and I use the uh, titanium forced line that's a Husqvarna line and it's gray I'm not sponsored by any of those companies by the way I feel like you have to say that nowadays I mean personally I don't care but people care and so that's just an honest opinion is why I'm stating that now the uh, other string that I've used over the years I really liked heavy duty line or it's called ugly line depending on if you get it from Lowe's or Home Depot but it's a yellow line that's in a triangle shape and then I've tried like black diamond line wasn't a big fan uh, well I've tried a bunch of lines that I just didn't like I normally don't see a whole lot but I've killed two snakes here and saw a lizard I didn't intentionally kill the snakes just just happens it's part of it you know it's unfortunate but it's part of it let's get back okay so I'm gonna follow along while I'm weeding a little bit and see if I can give you some tips along the way so right here this is a very large weed that was growing so you notice I started at the top and weeded it from the top to the bottom what that's gonna do is it's actually gonna just completely disperse that plant versus cutting it down and then there's a three foot long piece of plant there that it's hard to get rid of so that's a, a good little technique if the whole yard's overgrown uh you know you kind of got to do what you got to do now i'm walking backwards while weed eating i'm doing that because i'm cutting a lot of overgrowth now you can walk forward but i like to walk backward when it's like that it's really all personal preference and up to you i'm also beveling towards the bottom of the fence that's something that you don't have to do but that's something that I'm doing in this situation so that I'm not actually uh, hitting the string up against the fence, tearing the fence up. The other thing you can do is I like to, you know, as I've trained employees in the past, I've always told them just to kiss the fence with the weed eater string. What I mean by that is if you're making a lot of noise when you're weed eating up against an object, you're doing damage to that object, whether it's a fence or a pot or whatever it might be. Now, I'm also weed eating so that the direction of the string is actually pushing everything into the yard so that's something to be aware of some weed eaters the the head will rotate in a clockwise manner or some in a counterclockwise manner so you have to pay attention to what your specific weed eater is doing but that's something that i do is so when i'm weeding it up against the fence or anything like that it's actually pushing everything to the yard as far as uh do you weed eat first do you mow first do you do this do you do that i don't think it really matters it's just really all up to your personal preference and I like how you like doing it on the overgrown stuff like this. Normally I'll mow, then I'll weed eat. Sometimes I weed eat, then I mow. It just really depends on how I feel that day or if I think there's a lot of uh, debris and objects in the yard that might cause damage to my mower, then I will actually weed eat first. If you're messing with an overgrown yard, you know, while you're weed eating that yard, that's a really good way to observe if there's something to be worried about. You know, one of the yards that I cut this year there was actually a box spring that had been burnt, so I would have run into the springs from the bed, or maybe it was the the actual mattress was burnt, so there's springs from the mattress. But if I would have hit that with the mower, which I couldn't couldn't see at all until I weeded it, it would have done massive damage to the mower, gotten caught up underneath, it would have caused a huge headache. So in that case, I weeded it first, it kind of saved me. Now if you're cutting a yard and it's a weekly property, I kind of prefer to weed eat last, Although sometimes I'll do it first. So again, I know I'm getting off point, but the reason why I like to weed eat last is because I'll actually use the trimmer. So the weed eater, okay? I don't want to get you confused because I've been saying weed eater and now I'm saying trimmer. But I'll use that trimmer to edge the concrete as well. Why I would do it that way is I'm not cutting a lot of grass off and I don't need the mower to clean up that excess debris because we're talking about a very, very small amount when you're coming in weekly that you're actually cutting off. So I'm actually going to weed eat after mowing then I'm going to edge. And the reason why I want to edge last is because when I'm riding the mower from one spot to another in the yard, when I go off the grass and onto the concrete, it kind of lays that grass over. And I'm a pretty picky person with stuff sometimes, especially if it's a weekly client, I'm taking care of them and I want it to look really good. I'm very, very picky and almost, um, well, I'm almost a perfectionist with it. And I want it to look as good as I possibly can, right? which I know you guys haven't seen a whole lot of my nice yards that I've done for clients in the past because that's not really what my channel is anymore. It's the crazy entertaining stuff, right? And I want to entertain you. I want you to have fun. And when it looks like I'm not doing anything, it's just not that fun to watch. But 
if you're doing your job correctly as a lawn care provider, it's going to look like you're coming and you're not actually doing anything. It's going to look like you're just cutting the lawn, but doesn't look like you're cutting much off. And that's what a lot of clients want. They don't want their yard to ever look like it's, you know, unmanicured. And they, they don't want to be the nuisance in the neighborhood. So it's important to have that consistent weekly schedule. Now, there's yards that they like it bi-weekly and it'll look like this when you come to cut. Well, not quite as crazy as this, but pretty close. So, you know, some of these spring weeds and if you have like a yard with a lot of weeds like this, they will grow crazy at certain times of the year. So the bi-weeklies are a bit iffy for me as I was growing my lawn business. I actually quit doing bi-weekly lawns, only went weekly, and that really helped me stay consistent. And, you know, if we had a, a delay of any kind for weather or anything like that, I was always on top of everything. And at worst case scenario, if I got delayed because it rained all week, then they were only, you know, a week extra. So they were out two weeks. So it took me some extra time to catch up. But their yard didn't look as bad as if it was a bi-weekly. I'm trying to catch everything up. Then it's three weeks. And while I'm trying to catch up all the lawns because they're at three weeks, it's taking me a lot longer. So maybe it gets all the way out to four weeks, which is a month. So then you're cutting that lawn that you bid for whatever price you bid it at. You're cutting it at a month interval. And you feel like you can't charge more because of that. So for me, because I gave a bid on a property and I was stuck with that number, you know, even if it went, you know, two, three weeks or whatever because of rain delays, I always caught it up and I, I ate that expense. I never charged more on the lawn because it was overgrown or tall because of weather. That's not their fault. It's not my fault. It is what it is. Some people charge for that. I don't. You might have wondered why I left so much weed eating around the house. And the reason being is when there's tall grass, you don't know what's there. And there's normally a clean out within about a foot from the house. So you can see right here, this is a pipe that's been broke. It's been broke for a long time. You can see there's, you know, soil and stuff already over it. And that's the clean out cap. Stick that back on there but uh yeah somebody else has obviously hit it in the past so you just got to be careful that kind of thing uh what they should have done is come in here cut that off put a coupler on and put that cap back on right but our industry is full of a lot of scuzzy people so you know that's not really a, a difficult fix at all last little bit of edging blowing stuff out one time remowing then a final cleanup with uh blowing material out We'll be out of here.
Okay, so now what I'm doing right here, I call this fanning the grass. I don't know if there's a technical term in the industry for it or whatever it might be, but I call this fanning the grass. That's what I've always told my employees. Now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going across it, obviously fanning back and forth. That's where I come up with the terminology. I'm busting up all of the clumps and any of the grass that's not cut. You notice there's some long stragglers. I'm making sure I'm able to cut those long stragglers. So I'm getting all that grass out of the way. Now when it's real, real wet like this, there's really nothing you can do other than move it. If it is wet and it's a hot, dry day, sometimes when you cut it, it'll dry out some and then you can use the mower to disperse it a little better, mulch it up a little finer and hide it into the grass. Something like this, you could also bag, you could blow it all into a pile and rake it up. It really comes down to your personal preference. For me on this particular job, there was a big hole in the yard around a stump. So I, I ended up figuring out that I couldn't work with it and I actually put it in that hole. Now it's gonna break down and it's gonna make that fill in eventually. You might wanna keep this technique in mind if you're cutting something that's a little overgrown, you got some excess grass, and if you're not wanting to have a bagging mower or you don't wanna bag it, this method works really, really good when the grass is kind of dry because you can fan it out like this and then either give it one more mow or you may not even have to, but it'll hide that grass or disperse that grass enough that you don't have clumps. If it's clumped up, then that'll turn into a big brown chunk of dead grass on the lawn. It's gonna choke out the grass on the lawn. It's gonna kill it, and then more than likely you're gonna have weeds grow back there, but you can disperse it into finely cut particles, and that's gonna sift down into the lawn. It's gonna break down, and then it's actually gonna feed the lawn. You can get away with doing it as long as it's not clumped up. You don't wanna have a nasty end result. You want it to have a good finished product when it's all said and done. Now there are some leaves in the corner by the back of the shed and feel free to give me crap in the comments because I forgot to clean up those leaves on this project and while I was watching this video I'm like how did I forget that? Well it's because I got distracted on the lawn which had a ton of cleanup and you know it just happens. So I wish I would have gotten that. That's one thing that I, I can uh, take note for myself that I should have gotten that. I do want it to look good. So when I do see something and you know, in a case like this, it's kind of nice to be able to go back and rewatch what I've done so that I can take note of those things and make myself a better professional as I'm doing projects like this. Now this was a project that I did completely free for a single mom. She called me, she said, hey, I'm having trouble finding anybody to cut my yard they're just not wanting to take it on and she was actually wanting to hire me and I said you know what I've got a channel I make videos about tall grass I'll come give you a cleanup and then we'll help you find one of my buddies that might be able to take care of you on a consistent basis and so I referred some people to her that could take care of her lawn after that but you know with all the rain that we had been having and then the time of the year that she called me it's early spring but it's far enough in that everybody was busy so it's really hard to find a good reliable lawn contractor that's going to come in and take care of you consistently at a certain point in the year because they're booked up but it's it's totally possible but that's kind of how i i took care of it i didn't charge her a dime it is free because you guys support me i'm able to go out and do these projects for free which is really really awesome i think that's really cool that my business has evolved into that and i love that and like i've said you know earlier in the video that that gives me a lot of fulfillment and i know that my family's taken care of because the videos do well and then all my equipment's taken care of and gas is paid for and so you know when i first started making these overgrown tall videos and cutting them for free i wasn't making money and you know i was the first person on youtube in the lawn care realm to say they were cutting something for free and before me it was something that you would never want to say because everybody was talking about how to be good in business how to be successful and doing anything for free was shameful you got to go out there and get that money and you know I think you almost lose the enjoyment of just doing the job when you're so focused on business and growing the business and that kind of stuff. So the, doing these videos and having YouTube as my hobby because that's what it was in the beginning for me before it became now it's a business. It's what I do. It's, it's how I go out and create an income for my family. But the positive side that I get to enjoy it and then it, I, it has positive impact and that you know we've pr promoted GoFundMe's and I think we had somewhere between a hundred and hundred and fifty thousand dollars that were donated by you guys to help those people that were in those hardships last year that I, I promoted and um, you know we signed on with Hustler Mowers this year and so now 
we've got some new mowers from them that we're going to be testing out on the channel and really enjoying that stuff so far i've been enjoying that the only reason i took that contract with them because i don't want to put handcuffs on myself personally i don't know if sponsorships are for me because i don't like handcuffs but hustler gave me the freedom to say what i want when i want good or bad about the equipment they were just really backed me and then they also said you know hey how about we give you four mowers to give away to your viewers and i was like yeah that's cool so they're giving us four commercial mowers that we can give away to lawn care guys that may not otherwise be able to afford that piece of equipment because mowers are very expensive so that i thought was a huge benefit and a huge plus because they came at me with four offers and i just kept shooting them down i'm like i'm not interested not interested, not interested. You guys might have seen that collab video I did with Top Notch Lawn Care in Wichita. I actually went down there to test those mowers to try them out to see if I like them, and I really did, but I had to play hardball. I was like, nope, not, not going to sign with you guys, because that's the business side of YouTube is just making sure that you get your worth, and it's the same that ties in with lawn care. If you're going to go out, you can't always do free projects. You know, if you want to help somebody and you want to do a donation service, that's great. But you have to make sure your bills are paid, things are taken care of. So, you know, I turned down that offer, offer because I know my worth. I know what our channel does and I know how good we are and, and what we have going on. And we have something awesome. But if I don't make sure certain things are taken care of, there's no way I can continue to do that. So I'm working diligently on my side to make sure things are taken care of. And I know you guys are working hard on your side, leaving the comments, uh, giving us shares, helping us out, thumbs up, supporting by subscribing. And, you know, with the both of us doing that, I'm able to help a bunch of people. And I mean, I want to help hundreds, thousands. I want to see, you know, my videos when I do videos that I'm able to continue doing the donation cuts where I go out and I donate all the money from the videos or I cut somebody's lawn and I give them a thousand bucks to pay rent or whatever. I love doing that kind of stuff and just just helping people out. And I think it's important to be a good steward of what the Lord gave you because the reality is whatever you do in life, the Lord put you in that position, whether it's good or bad. So if I look back on my life a few years ago, things were hard and I was struggling and I was working for years. And, you know, the mower I'm using in this video almost crippled me up because I'm riding this Velky plate. And it's not this mower in specific, you know, to be specific, but it's just riding on that Velky plate really did a lot of damage to my, my feet. And so now I'm not able to run or jump on trampolines or do stuff that I really like to do with my daughter because I have to let my body heal, which is kind of a big downside side effect of not having correct equipment. And um, But I did what I had to do to pay the bills. I did what I had to do to further myself. But through my process of trying to better myself, I started reading all these self-help books and feeling lost, feeling like no matter how much I did, no matter how much I tried to change, I'm, I mean, I'm, uh, you know, just pulling out my hair that I can't feel like I have any progression, although I was doing a lot of things. And then through that, I started hearing all these self-help people. They were saying Bible verse here or there, which is why I put Bible verses in my videos. I want you to get the same impact. I want you to be driven to read that book. Whether you read it as a self-help book like I did when I first read it, I read it to gain the wisdom and the knowledge and everything that was in there because it is a, a book that talks about a lot in life and it is a lot of wisdom and it is very much so a self-help book, business book, financial book in a lot of ways. Or if you are reading it for the spiritual aspect, it doesn't matter to me as long as you're driven to read something that impacts your life. But I don't want to push that on anybody either. That's all up to you. But I'm just sharing my story. You know, I was compelled to read that book. I read it from a standpoint of being skeptic about being religious, being a believer in any way really hated the conversation about religion to be honest in general and then after reading that and then giving myself to the lord I, I felt this immediate rush of just all of the stress all of the anger all of the pain all of that went away immediately and since then my life has drastically changed so if you go back and you watch some of my older videos you might notice that i cussed and i still cuss today I still have faults today. I still have vices that I try to work through every day to make myself better. But what has happened is my life was drastically changed in a very rapid manner. Let's go knock out the back. You know, all these podcasts, been on a few of them now. 
And I want to know how our channel's growing fast. And the real answer is, when I'm sick, I work. When I'm tired, I work. When I don't feel like it, I work. That's how it goes, man. I would have never dreamed that I would be going out and cutting lawns for free and helping people and enjoying that and meeting new people all the time. I would have never dreamed that would be my career. I was just figuring out how to charge $50 a lawn weekly and make enough to make a good living and buy a house and do all this stuff and you know, have the American dream, right? And now the Lord has given me abundance. And because of that, the Lord says, if you do well with a little, he'll give you much. Now he's talking about responsibilities. He's talking about, you know, not just material aspects in your life, but he's talking about your responsibilities and what you should do as a believer. And as a believer, I'm supposed to share my experiences with you. And I use my channel as a ministry a lot of the times. I kind of disguise that as, you know, sharing what I'm doing in my career or how to grow your business. And there's a lot of ministry to that as well because, you know, it's kind of like give a man a fish versus, you know, teach a man a fish. If you're interested in starting a business, you know, if I can teach you how to make money and buy your own mower and stuff, that's great versus giving you a mower. So if I give somebody a mower, I want to know that they have the skills available to be able to make an income with that. I, th I think it's just incredibly important. I know it's what I'm called to do. It's what I'm compelled to do, and I enjoy it. The other thing with cutting these lawns for free, I get a lot of questions about why you would cut lawns for free, why you're doing it. And again, it's because I was listening to these things that the Lord was telling me. You know, when I made my first overgrown lawn, I was looking at this lawn, and I was like, hey, I want to cut that. James, we should go cut that because my brother was working with me at the time. And he said, why would you do that? You're not getting paid for it. It's tearing up your equipment. Don't do that. That's stupid. And I was like, yeah, but it'd be really fun. And I was just looking at it as something that would be fun for the channel. So I was going to do it just for the fact that I knew you guys would like it. And I thought it would be fun to share the war stories of how I began in my business and the struggles and the type of lawns that I worked with my first two, three, four years, right? So I kept looking at it. And then my dad came down and I was like, Dad, I've been wanting to cut this yard. James won't cut it with me, but I'm wanting to do it. And he's like, well, let's go do it. So I cut the lawn with my dad and it was great. I enjoyed it. I loved it. I had a lot of fun with my dad. I always enjoy working with dad. Cabin on the Hill is their channel, by the way, if you want to check them out. So moving forward, when I went to edit the video for this, I'm listening to Charles Stanley. That's somebody that I listen to a lot. It's a, you know, he's a preacher and his preaching is life application. So it's, it's not so much motivational, make you feel good. That type of preaching, it's life application of the word that's in the Bible. So, you know, I'm listening to it, but it was just impactful. And again, I felt called. I said, hey, I'm going to put this sermon on my video. And my wife actually told me, she's like, you're an idiot. Don't do it. You're going to lose all the subscribers you have that you've worked hard for because people don't like religion. And I was like, yeah, no, but this is what I'm called to do. This is this is what I want to do. And we kind of got in a little bickerment. And then she's finally like, whatever, Kevin, and went to bed, right? Well, I went ahead and put it on the video, shelled it out, didn't think much of it. The video didn't do that well. It did all right. I was like, all right, Lord, use me however you want. If somebody calls and says they need this type of work done, I know that's what you want me to do and I'll do it not even 10 minutes later the city called me and said hey Kevin do you want to work on abatement properties and I thought they said embankment and I'm like I don't want to mess with hills like I don't do I don't mow hills and they said no abatement overgrown properties and I was like all right well yeah so the Lord put me there where I'm cutting overgrown properties right and then from there I'm cutting these yards and I'm talking with the city and I find out their process after I've cut a few of them I just start talking with them I'm like so how's this all work and they told me basically they charge the homeowner what I charged plus a processing fee of two or three hundred dollars and I said well that's cool what happens if they don't pay it well we put a labor lien on their house and then if they don't pay that then we put their house up for sale at a sheriff's auction and I was not okay with that I'm not okay with going out and making a video to entertain people or like at that time I wasn't making an income off of YouTube but now there's income coming from YouTube that it supports me doing what I do. So don't throw a fit about me doing charity work. Some of those people are weird out there. You got to have funding. To keep something going, you got to have funding. So anyways, I'm not okay with going and cutting somebody's property to make a video and then they might lose their house for it. So you know what I did? Well, I stayed on the list for the city. They kept sending me the information, which yards are overgrown to go bid on. And then before the city had a chance to cut them, I went and cut them. And while some people are like, hey, that's still in work for somebody and this and that. That's cool. I even that out by teaching 
my viewers how to go out and get work that's consistent that will actually benefit their business and grow their business because cutting for the city is not going to grow your business and it's not going to help you long term it's going to tear up your equipment it's going to tear up your body and it's not going to help you they also take the lowest bid so it's like a slow going out of business sale I teach people how to make a good income from the lawn business and that's how I balance it out. Plus, if you're going to go out of business because you missed one lawn service, you know, one property, one job, that's not your problem. Your problem is that you're not keeping your product line full and getting the work you need to stay in business. But anyways, that's the story about why I cut lawns for free and, you know, that's kind of my testimony with it. and and what happened and how it happened and you know my life's drastically changed real fast because I listened to the signs you know the Lord sends signs it's like it's like a stop sign or you know a street light but he's gonna tell you stuff and if you listen to it he's gonna lead you in the right direction he's gonna tell you hey you're about to get in a wreck if you run the stop sign or he's gonna say hey just stop for a second I got a great plan for you and I'm gonna get you there so that's that and that's my experience and that's why I cut these lawns for free and how beautiful is it that it's started a trend and everybody's cutting these lawns for free and I don't care what their motivations are whether they're in it for the money or they want to see somebody actually do good and they want to help their community it's not for me to judge their motives but it is really cool that it started a trend and it's helping people that are actually in need you know there's a lot of people that are struggling and there's a lot of people that are in hardships just to see that happening in the community and and you know I'm starting to see it with other industries on YouTube now. It's it's going to be a beautiful progression. And if, you know, people chase money to to make that happen, it's whatever. I don't I don't really care what their motives are. For me, I know I have my heart in the right place, and that's all I need to know. That I'm led to do this. This is what I'm supposed to do, and this is how I'm going to do it. Well, it's pretty good. There's still some uh clumps like right around there and stuff. And the weeds, spring weeds like to lay down when you run over them with your tires. So, well, it's one of those, it's about as good as it's gonna get, you know, kind of things. Although it does look better. It looks pretty sharp. I'm not disappointed. A little bit of mud. Let's, let's get that out of there. Ooh. I should have broke out a shovel for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go take a look at the back. All right, coming in the back, we got all these leaves out of the way. The lawn looks better. Like two, three cuts in some areas. Everything's fanned out over there, so you can see how well that method works. You know, it's pretty good. And if you look down at the grass, it's not bad. So if you come in weekly at that point, this will look sharp. Now this, <coughs> uh anyways now this is clumped up grass and uh it's not gonna look good and it's probably gonna stink but it'll pack right into those holes and it'll break down and it'll turn into dirt so if you got a big hole and your lawn's high hold on i don't keep kleenexes with me all right anyways if you got a big hole and your grass got kind of high or you bag your grass dump it in that hole it'll look ugly for a little bit it'll fill up and then fill that over with some dirt you can put grass seed right on top of it it'll look good pretty soon all that said i'm getting out of here but if you enjoyed this video if you just take a little bit of time to give us a thumbs up that really goes a long ways to helping boost these videos out get them to more people and uh, it allows me to keep making these and if you just leave a comment, again, that really helps as well. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next one.